In this video, I'll show you how you can use a new Reaper feature to generate visuals for your music video. So I did mention this in the uh, What's New in Reaper 5.97 video. Uh, kind of went through it really quickly. I'm going to show you the actual projects that I used to create sort of a music video. I took that project and I turned it into my intro for 2019 the little clip you just saw. That's all generated inside of Reaper uh, based on audio of the music that you're hearing. So let's check this out. So this is my Synthwave music video uh, project. I did this um, mid-December, I think. I'm not sure when I published the music video, but uh, these features were not public yet. Here's how it's set up. I've got Track six is my MP3 of the music. And on this track, I'm using Video Sample Peaker plugin. I've got it set to the default settings of uh, one second look ahead. So um, it's going to look one second ahead in the music and figure out what samples it needs to send to the next uh, plugin. Um, you've seen what the actual video looks like. It's, it's got this pink text. It has this sort of purpley look to it in the background. Uh, there's a circle kind of framing the logo, and then there is the pink and blue um, moving graphics. I'm going to turn off everything except for the first layer. In my project settings, I do have this set up so that items in lower numbered uh, tracks replace higher, which means that um, the top level stuff is visible over any lower stuff any color modifiers you use are going to affect those other layers below. So the lowest layer is my audio track. The next layer above that is my first generator. And this is giving me the main look of the video. I have the video processor added with decorative oscilloscope um, preset. That's here in the synthesis section. Now I did make this before the actual um, stock plus, or stock preset was added. So it may be a little bit different if I tried to rebuild this today. Um, but essentially all I'm doing here is mode zero. I've got the point count up to 310. Uh, the default is 1200, so I've actually reduced, reduced it. I wanted to look, have a really retro aesthetic, and so 310 looked about right. Point size four, I wanted it to be quite small um, size, but you can you can drastically change how this looks depending on what you like to see. The gain on this I have at minus six, which kind of affects the, the waveform height. Um, blitter zoom and persist are those sort of ghost effects. I'm gonna play it here. Actually, uh, so don't get annoyed by this music. I'm gonna not pass through the audio here. So yeah, I'm generating this waveform as uh, as the track plays back. The zoom controls, I found that it just looked like it moved a lot faster if I zoomed in a little bit. And the blitter persist, uh, I actually have that automated. Let's bypass the automation. It's that ghostly uh, glow sort of thing. With that turned completely off, it's just the the single line. I have the foreground red all the way up, green at 0 0.24, and uh, blue at 0 0.6. Uh, if these are all at, at 1, you get a white line. If they're all at 0, you get a black line. You can barely see that there over the dark background. But yeah, this this particular color is where I ended up um, thinking that it looked pretty good. And then the background color, same deal. You can adjust red, green, and blue to get um, the colors that you'd like. You can move the X position left and right and the Y position up and down at somewhere around there. So that's layer one. 
layer two, a little bit different. So starting with the first plugin in the chain, basically the same settings, not quite as much of the uh, blitter persist uh, on there, just slightly lower. I've got the whole thing moved up a bit. And um, instead of a pink background, it's a black background because I'm going to use the next plugin to actually remove black from this image. The way that colors blend using this makes that makes this green color more of a cyan color when it's blended on top of this purple color. Yeah, so more of a cyan or even blue, I guess you could say. Here's how that looks if I change the point size. But I think that's a lot uglier, personally. And the point count, and raise that up. But you know, every project's gonna be different, so just experiment. I like to brown 310 with a point size of four. And here's what raising the gain does. If you want a little more abstract, you could raise the gain up. Blitter persist even higher. If you have it at like uh, 99 or 100 percent, it's going to be really weird. And if you like go to different parts of the project, it's not going to refresh. That's actually something I ran into with this project when I had these automated. As I was just trying to figure out the best settings, I found that when I go back to the beginning of the project, it wasn't set right. So um, that's why I'm automating here, starting it at zero just so that the background is clear. There's none of those echoes. Uh, this bit of code here is effectively just taking out anything black and leaving everything else. So you put this after something with a black background or something with a black foreground with like white or anything else in, in the image, and it will pass that through. So in this case, I've taken the black background from the generator and I've passed through everything else, which is the, um, the, the green um, oscilloscope. So it's a really simple code, just a few lines. I got this from the forum. Then next I've got a peephole wipe, and this is another one of the new stock presets. And all this is doing is just adding a faint circle in the, the center. Uh, let me change the, if I change the alpha, you can see that, um, you, you can see the shape a little bit clearer. So I just had that just so it's like barely visible. I found that that was just the look that I really liked. And then using the essential color controls preset that I've shared before, this is one of my presets. Um, I just kind of change the overall saturation and tweak the colors a bit, a little more red and green with some blue taken out. So I went some, from sort of a dark purple to more of a pinkish color. Next is the text generator. I've got that on a MIDI item, just so it can control where and when it plays. Um, using the Sega logo font that I downloaded from defont.com. It's hard to tell here, but there's just a kind of a slight outline in there. If I take that drop shadow off, it's just flat, and I bring the drop shadow up. It's kind of barely there, but it kind of just adds some dimension to it. Lots of these things are just really subtle changes. And then next, I've got the glitch and VHS overlay. This is something I just downloaded. Um, if I turn off all the other tracks, and play it. It's just kind of like little glitches around. Not really doing a lot, but just kind of adds in, again, like texture, I guess you could say, little glitches. And again, I'm using the lighten screen overlay. So it's removing all the black from that. Without that, we would only see the black video with the glitches on it. And with this preset on, it passes through everything that's not black. And so we just get the glitches on the screen. It does kind of lighten everything because it's not quite black, but I kind of like that. And now it has more of a, a faded look. So there's this 
this like pinkish line here. There's these glitches. Every once in a while, there's a horizontal line. I really like that aesthetic. So that's the music video. That's what I put out back in December, I think it was. So that became the basis of my video intros. And all I really needed to do was kind of remix that song to get a shorter intro. The whole, the whole track is only five or six seconds now. The main thing I wanted to show you here is that I'm using a different VHS noise generator. And this is from one of the users on the forum. So here's the original glitch one. And these are sort of like grain effects. And you can find, I'll have a link to this um, in the blog post and in the description of the video. So it's more of these horizontal sort of glitch effects. Um, not really doing anything special with this, I don't think. Here it is on its own, is colored um, noise sort of, sort of thing. I, I use the light and screen overlay to remove any of the black areas, which makes for a really faded look. And then when I use the essential color control or essential video controls, I change the opacity down to 0 0.26. So if it's all the way down, we're not seeing any of that. It's all the way up. It's very faded. So just somewhere in the middle, I want this to kind of lighten the overall image, but I don't really want to see that grain too obvious. In this video, I wanted to have a lot of kind of random glitches on the logo. I think it's kind of a subtle effect, but it, it was something that I really wanted to do. So I've got a pixelate preset here. It's again, one of the stock presets that comes with Reaper and so width is at one, height's at one, so it's doing the entire um, the entire field of view, the entire frame size is being pixelated and pixel size 0 0.4. So it's not doing a lot. So that's off with on. Looks like this. And because I've got that moving background, it uh, it kind of glitches it. So it kind of shifts things around, looks a little bit weird. Pretty subtle effect though overall. And then I've got a bunch of the RGB decompose presets on here. And it's just different settings. So this first one, red shift minus 12 on the X and minus 14 on the Y, blue shifted uh, horizontally 22. The next one, uh, one minus 14, 0, minus 20, 22. So just different settings. So, OK, I'm going to put it in loop, play this back. So it just kind of shifts around, and it happens really quickly. It's only a few frames that all those little glitches happen. And so I'm just repeating um, these effects every second or so I'm doing that. My outro video is very similar. I'm doing all those glitches again. Um, the only thing is I would have the text generator turned off. Um, I have the vignette turned off. What else? Have these generator things turned off. And so I've got a transparent image added in here. So it looks like this pretty basic image. Um, and it just goes through some various glitch things. So a bunch of RGB shift and then into a pixelate. I don't know if anyone even notices those things, but that's the sort of look that I've always wanted for these things. It's all pretty basic stuff, I think, but it's stuff that's taken me a long time to figure out kind of on my own. It's lots of little layers and lots of little tweaks to the colors, adding in little texture things like the, the grain or the glitches and things like that to make it more interesting. You can do a lot less or you can do a lot more, but I, this is a look that I really like. And um, I'm happy I was able to, ch to kind of come up with this on my own um, in less than a day.
I'm going to show you one more project, and this is the project template that I use for the Mastering Show podcast. I I did a video um, on how I do the music videos quite a while ago, and it's a little bit different. Um, in that video, I said, make your video like one frame per second and then export it. This is a little bit different because I'm doing the generator. And so the frame rate's at 15 here, and I thought that was a good compromise between long render times and um, and good visual quality. So I'm gonna I'm gonna meet the audio here. And so the look of it is just a white um, white oscilloscope over here when we're talking. I think that makes it just a little bit more interesting to watch on YouTube. And it was really simple to do. So I've got the image pasted in here, looped, and I've got the decorative oscilloscope. Again, I'm using a black background. So it's a white oscilloscope with a black background, very small amount of the blitter persist. I've got it positioned with the X and Y controls here to get it into this area of the image. And then taking away the black again. So that's about all there is to say on this topic. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you can put some of these uh, ideas to use. In the past, I've looked at different ways of generating uh, an oscilloscope image like this, and this is one of the easiest ways that I've found. So I um, highly recommend trying this out if you have a podcast or if you want to make a simple music video for your band. Um, yeah, give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community, support the Reaper Blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.